get ready to launch into orbit because SpaceX has just hinted at the launch schedule after the S-28, and it's gaining momentum for an exciting flight. Recently, SpaceX set a live schedule on their X page, starting on the morning of March 14th. This news is truly thrilling and aligns with many previous predictions. Interestingly, March 14th happens to be SpaceX's founding day, so it wouldn't be surprising if they gave us a special surprise, like Flight 3 on that day, right? Adding to the anticipation, I stumbled upon an image of NASA's W57 aircraft work schedule, showing a placeholder day reserved for March 14th. This reconnaissance aircraft monitors the rocket's working process, indicating preparations for Starship Flight 3. However, let's stay composed as important agencies, notably the FAA, haven't provided new updates yet. We'll need to await the FAA's launch license for more certainty. However, if the launch doesn't happen on March 14th, the WB-57 aircraft has other working schedules from late March to early April, providing alternative possibilities. What do you think will happen? Share your predictions in the comments below. Flight 3 is undoubtedly highly anticipated by the aerospace community. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson recently expressed his enthusiasm, highlighting the strong partnership between NASA and SpaceX, which continues to demonstrate American ingenuity. His words underscore the importance of missions like Starship's third integrated flight test as part of preparations to explore the Moon, Mars, and beyond. It was a pleasure talking to Gwyn Shotwell at LN Impact Forum. From NASA and SpaceX's commercial crew missions to the space station to future NASA Artemis missions, our partnership continues to show the strength of American ingenuity. I look forward to Starship's third integrated flight test as we prepare to go back to the moon, onto Mars, and beyond. With this encouragement, we're hopeful that the FAA will provide a new update soon. Prior to this update, S-28 was destacked from Booster B-10 as predicted. This step followed the successful wet dress rehearsal test on March 3rd, indicating progress in the preparations for Flight 3. Before the recent update, on the morning of March 5th, around 6.30 a.m. Central, the ship QD disconnected from S-28. About an hour later, amidst the thick fog of coastal Boca Chica, Chopstick lifted and lowered S-28 onto the stand next to the OLM. This process proceeded swiftly, taking approximately half an hour, indicating no major issues occurred. As of now, S-28 remains positioned next to the OLM and between Chopstick. Following the D-stack, several tasks may unfold. Firstly, D-stacking ensures the safety of Flight 3 hardware, shielding it from potential weather-related impacts atop the 122-meter-high prototype. Additionally, the lowering of S-28 may allow engineers to conduct brief tests on the heat shield tile system following the wet dress rehearsal. This system is crucial for safeguarding the prototype against the heat generated by atmospheric friction during the flight. Meanwhile, the booster may undergo minor checks involving the hot staging ring system as the ship QD extends towards this ring. Similar to the heat shield system, hot staging is integral to the flight flight, particularly during the two-stage separation process. Following the D-Stack, the crucial next step will involve the installation of Flight Termination System Explosive Packages. More than two weeks ago, on February 20th, two trucks transported two types of explosives, Explosive 1.1D and Explosive 1.4, to Starbase. Among these, Explosive 1.1D, used in previous flights, indicates that if it's promptly installed on both stages, Starship Flight 3 is nearing complete. Historically, the installation of explosive packages occurred shortly before launch, such as six days prior to Flight 1 and seven days before Flight 2. However, everything hinges on the FAA and other agency approvals, with environmental teams currently ramping up work at Starbase to finalize assessments. Meanwhile, Flight 4 hardware, S-29, may undergo critical testing soon. SpaceX received a new road closure schedule with a primary date of March 7th and a backup date on the 8th, spanning from 8 a.m to 8 p.m. This extended road closure likely indicates significant tests for S-29, potentially including its first static fire test. SpaceX might even transport S-29 and stack it onto B-10 once S-28 vacates the booster. This flexibility underscores SpaceX's penchant for surprises, so brace yourselves for potential developments. Amidst the test and launch preparations, SpaceX is intensifying production efforts with booster B-14. On March 5th, both the aft and forward 
sections of B-14 were delivered to megabase doors. Speculation suggests that B-14 might feature several structural modifications compared to previous prototypes, likely undergoing thorough testing before implementation in future iterations. This proactive approach underscores SpaceX's commitment to advancing the Starship system towards increased flight activity this year. Venturing beyond Starbase, let's journey to orbit where SpaceX's Crew Dragon has successfully docked with the International Space Station. After a day-long voyage through space, Dragon Crew 8 reached the ISS at 2.28 a.m. Eastern on March 5th, marking the fifth docking for Dragon Endeavor. Elon Musk's tweet earlier hinted at this milestone, stating, The SpaceX Dragon is on final docking approach to space station. This mission represents SpaceX's eighth crew flight under the Commercial Crew Program, carrying NASA astronauts Matthew Dominic, Michael Barat, Jeanette Epps, and Russian cosmonaut Alexander Grabenkin. Dominic serves as the mission commander, Barat as the pilot, while Epps and Grabenkin function as mission specialists. With the crew mostly comprising spaceflight rookies, Barat stands as the experienced hand, having undertaken two orbital missions prior to this one. Scheduled to spend six months on the ISS, the Crew 8 astronauts are slated to return to to Earth in August. Meanwhile, Crew-7, launched last August, will likely return no sooner than March 11th. As Crew-8's mission progresses, SpaceX and NASA are gearing up to launch Crew-9 later this month, ensuring a seamless transition of operations on the ISS. Additionally, April may witness the dispatch of two more astronauts to the ISS via Boeing's Starliner. And finally, for our last segment of today's episode, Northrop Grumman's recent actions have sent shockwaves through the aerospace industry. Following a string of setbacks including incidents with lunar missions and the termination of Space Force programs, the company has issued WARN, or WARN, notices to its employees at Space Park in Redondo Beach, California. These notices serve as a forewarning of potential layoffs looming on the horizon. The issuance of WARN notices comes amidst a turbulent period for Northrop Grumman, marked by financial and operational challenges. These include the high-profile cancellation of a program by the U.S. Space Force and cost overruns on a crucial NASA project. The WAR notices indicate that around 1,000 out of 7,000 employees at Space Park may face uncertainty as the company navigates shifting priorities and budgetary constraints imposed by its government clients. This development underscores the broader challenges facing Northrop Grumman as it seeks to adapt to changing dynamics within the aerospace sector. Despite experiencing significant growth in its space sector last year, Northrop Grumman's successes have been tempered by strategic shifts within its client base. One one notable setback includes the cancellation of a multi-billion dollar military communications satellite program by the Space Force. This decision was driven by concerns over cost overruns and scheduling issues, which have cast a shadow over the company's achievements. In addition to the Space Force program cancellation, Northrop Grumman has faced financial challenges related to its contract to build the Habitation and Logistics Outpost, or HALO, module for NASA's Lunar Gateway. The company reported losses totaling $100 million attributed to unforeseen seen cost increases and macroeconomic challenges. It remains to be seen how Northrop Grumman will navigate these difficulties and whether other industry players will capitalize on the opportunities presented by its setbacks. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this is Kevin with a bit of a hoarse throat from Great SpaceX. And until next time, keep looking up.